Well, the government is urging South Africans in strife-torn Ukraine to try and leave for neighboring countries. This as Russia continues to bomb Ukrainian cities and towns. Some South Africans say they, it's been difficult to board trains. So let's speak now to student uh, Vuvundonga, who uh, was actually in the Ukraine, was in the Ukraine, about her experience. She joins us now via Zoom. Vuvu, thank you so much for even taking the time to speak to us. Can you just... Give us a picture of what's been happening so far. As a South African citizen, what were you experiencing? And more importantly, where are you now? Are you safe? Um, hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, well, actually, at the moment, we decided to take the train last night. Remember, we were having um, issues um, with our um, getting on board with the train because obviously uh, trains as well as forms of transportation are located firstly to um, Ukrainian, Ukrainian citizens. Um, at the moment, we're on a train. We're on our way to a different city. It's Kiev. And um, there's also bombings going on there. However, you know, there is no safe place in reality. We're just saddened by the fact that, you know what, um, we have not been provided by the embassy uh, private forms of, uh, of transportation that can take South Africans from these epicenters, which are these bombings are happening uh, into places like where they say we should cross the border. At this point, it feels like, I'll, I'll give you an example, I'd be asking someone to leave Mpopo and go to Cape Town and say, when you get to Cape Town, I will help you. However, how are they supposed to get from Mpopo to Cape Town if they have no form of transportation? Yeah. Um, currently, as I mentioned before, the forms of transportation that are available are prioritizing the Ukrainian citizens, which is okay because this is their country. And um, we're just a bit disappointed that our own country was not able to do something to help us from within the country itself yeah, at this we'll moment. So, yeah. about that, Vuvu, but you're on a train right now. Where exactly are you going? Have you been informed about what's going to be happening when you get there? Um, to be honest with you, we don't have a particular direction of where we're going. We are literally just running away. We just don't want to be um, where the firing line is because, like I said, our city, Kharkov, is experiencing really massive uh, blows at the moment. They're still continuing and going on right now as I speak. However, um, we hope that if we get to a different city, which is very close to um, the border, we'll be able to make plans in order to get into maybe Poland or... Um, any other country like that so that we can just um, go through that way. So, yeah. yeah. And in terms of, I mean, I'm listening to you saying that you have to make plans to go into a neighboring country and the like. You're bordering a, a, a train. You don't know where you're going exactly. Do you have resources? I mean, do you have money? Do some of the students have money? Do you guys have any kind of resources to help you along this journey? I mean, um, like I said, you know, before, I mentioned this before, and um, the day before the attacks, life was as normal as possible. Um, we are South African students, by the way. I don't think students have a large amount of savings just yeah. saved up for random things to happen. And we were waiting for our embassy to tell us that because they kept on telling us, even though other countries were telling their citizens to evacuate, our, our embassy was specifically telling us that, you know what, guys, we'll um, just wait, just be vigilant. We are waiting for a specific trigger and then we'll tell you to leave. Therefore, we were just a bit more relaxed as well on our mm. end. We are not going to lie. Um, we didn't have the time to save up as much finances. And with the pressure that's arising, obviously, the cost has just really skyrocketed. Prices of flights, prices of trains, whatever it is, I just really at an all time high it's becoming ridiculous uh, at the same time that these companies are also trying to profit in this manner um, from our pain now suffering so even if we have some sort of uh, financial that we had like finances that we had gathered up before at this moment they don't mean much because everything else is like almost tripled or quadrupled in price so yeah Vuvu, what exactly has the South African Embassy been communicating with you guys? Because as you're speaking right now, it sounds like you are significantly watch, wanting the Embassy to do something, or to be present in what you're going through. What has been said so far? What have they been communicating so far? Well, um, I'm not saying that the embassy has not made any efforts in order to help. Um, telling us that we're going to have visa-free entry and when we get to countries like Poland is actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. However, people can't get to Poland because they are on the other side of the country. I would love the South African embassy to organize transportation for students, in, in, like for South African students who are across the country in Ukraine experiencing hardships. There are other places of Ukraine which um, this is a little like the war is not happening as intense as the city that I'm from, Kharkov, and, and there are cities where it's very intense at the moment. And those 
cities. Ch um, students cannot get to all the way to the, to, to the Poland border on their own. They need the help of the embassy. Why is the embassy not providing transportation for South African students? I don't understand why this is not being uh, placed, how this is not being helped. We're just expected to uh, randomly get transportation on our own. We have explained this over and over again, that all forms of transportation are prioritizing Ukrainian citizens. And as you can imagine, this is a war. Everyone is trying to get out. There is no space, actually. It's a miracle that we're even able to make it on this train, honestly speaking. But um, so far, we, that's my concern. Like, why is the South African embassy not providing specific transportation for South Africans to make them leave these epicenters and get to the Poland border? Yeah, look, as we and I are having this conversation, I really am hoping that the South African government is listening. Yeah. And they're listening to the fact that you guys do need some kind of assistance and you need it speedily because, as you said, you are in the midst of a war you're in a train you don't even know where you're going at this moment in time you're just hoping that you're going to get there right so I, I completely empathize with the call that you're making and we need to keep making these calls uh, there is something that you said that was quite concerning is that um, while other embassies were telling its citizens to evacuate or to ready themselves up to get to places of safety our embassy or the South African embassy was saying stay put Yes, the South African embassy was telling us that, guys, yes, there is danger. If you want to leave, you can leave. However, it's not a time to, like, we are looking for a specific trigger. We shouldn't maybe readily uh, evacuate, especially because I want us to understand the fact that we have students who are doing a uh, final year right now. They're close to writing their very last exams. They can't just up and go and then miss the opportunity to write the exams. So we were really waiting for our embassy to show us a form of concern at that moment. They kept on telling us, oh, yes, we are monitoring the situation. You guys um, just stay, like, you know, stay calm a little bit. And um, I'm sorry. They just kept on telling us that they're monitoring the situation. We should stay calm and so forth. And those type of things just um, made us... Um, like maybe not as much and not act as fast because we're waiting for our embassy to tell us what to do. I mean, other countries like America and the UK were telling their citizens to evacuate two weeks prior to this attack. And our own embassy was telling us, oh, we, we were watching, we're looking and we're working with other embassies like as uh, they were telling us that they're working with embassies such as like the Nigerian embassy mm. and seeing how they can work together and all of these type of things. I just feel like a little bit more could have been done uh, in that scenario. I'm not saying it's anyone's fault. Of course, no one is ever prepared for war. Um, however, I just think that we could have been a little bit more careful, uh, especially concerning the lives of South Africans in this case. Yeah, let's make this practical now. You have got lots of citizens mm -hmm. that are listening to this conversation. Many are concerned and yeah. grateful that you are alive and that you are able to speak to us from the Ukraine as, at this moment in time. How can ordinary yeah. South Africans help? What, what, what do we need to do to help? Well, ordinary South Africans can give donations, guys. There's always a, a lot could go a lot a long way at this moment. The prices, like I said, have skyrocketed. Um, we have students here who don't even know how they're going to get from Poland to South Africa because of the way the price of the flight tickets they have, have are just ridiculous at this moment. So if ordinary South Africans can donate to us, if ordinary South Africans want to lend a helping hand, even if it's just sharing the message of what's really going on in Ukraine, what's happening here, it would really help on your social media get the word out there, get the world talking because no one really wants a war. These people don't deserve what's happening to them in their country. And it's not just the Africans that are here that are stuck. We have so many other people that are stuck in this area. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just very quickly, have you touched base with your family? Uh, how are the, how is your, how's your family doing? I mean, I can imagine that it's quite a... They're very worried. <laughs> yes, of course. Our families are very... Um, they're extremely worried. Um, our parents aren't able to sleep or eat or, you know, have proper human functioning at this moment. Um, however, they are trying their best to hold on. And um, we have been able to speak to uh, our um, families so far. However, we've been warned continuously that um, at any moment in time, our uh, electricity as well as um, network connections could be cut off because of the war. So we don't even know how long we have to still communicate with them before we just lose connection entirely so at the moment we just keep on updating them about our safety uh, what's going on the next step that we're doing and yeah that's all uh, I'm going to let you go, Vuvu, because as I said, uh, you, you, are, you are in a train and, and you're going. We're going to touch base and try to touch base with you as much as possible so that we can establish contact whilst we still have contact with you. Just on a, on a personal note, though, before I let you go, how are you? 
Mike, yeah. just as a, as a question, how are you? I, I wish I could honestly answer that question. I don't even know what that question means at this moment. I am, I'm trying to be as level-headed as possible. I know that I'm speaking very calmly to you, but it really feels like I am living within someone else's nightmare. I, I don't understand how I'm able to function. I was telling my friend that, you know what, I'm really just grateful for the Holy Spirit because I don't know how I would be able to still communicate, still do the things that I'm supposed to do on a daily basis if it wasn't for his help. But um, I don't think I can answer the question, how are you yet? I'll see maybe when I get to SA, I'll probably be able to answer it. But as for now, I, I that question doesn't exist to me. It doesn't matter at this moment. So, yeah.